Hey guys, happy Sunday. Good to see everybody. Can have some fun today. I want to dive in to a bunch of different projects. We've got carburetors. I want to dive into these. These are probably the most important, you know, aspect of these bikes. So time to tear into these and uh, see what we've got left. And also, I would like to uh, take a stab and see if we can have a little easier time uh, getting this hub apart, taking a look at the brakes, and, uh, you know, doing all those things. So we'll dive into a whole bunch of different stuff as well on today's live stream. But uh, I'm excited to get going. It's a beautiful day in Michigan, but I'm down in the shop. Uh, figured a live stream would be a fun uh, fun thing to do. So let's uh, dive into these carburetors. I think that's the biggest, most important thing. Um, that's where, you know, might need to buy some kits, might need to buy diaphragms, might need to buy, you know, other parts too. These look uh, pretty roached. You know, these aren't in the best shape. <laughs> at all chrome covers mm. is that another uh, chrome spray paint deal not really sure um what we're gonna do there but anyway i don't know let's get to wrench and let's get to work and uh you know hopefully maybe you're in your shop maybe you've got a project going on today um hopefully we can maybe work together a little bit let me just move my uh, mic over here a little bit because i think i'll primarily be hanging out in this area and uh, let's just see how we can uh, make some progress here got the chat up if you guys want to chime in and, and uh, talk about something, just uh, let me know and we'll hop in. Thanks so much for covering the carburetors. I just purchased a bike, need some info. Joe, perfect timing. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks for joining the live stream. Um, yeah, this is going to be a process. These carburetors definitely take time, um, but uh, you want to go slow and steady and kind of work your way through everything that you possibly can. So let's just start diving in. I think the first thing you want to do is, uh, you know, get the float bowl off and get the top cover off. That's the first place that you want to start here. And again, guys, JIS screwdrivers. Do not be using Phillips screwdrivers on this stuff. You're going to strip stuff out. So what you want to get is a nice set of Japanese industry standard screwdrivers. They are different from Phillips screwdrivers. If you have trouble kind of, uh, you know, stripping out a lot of screws on your bikes, it's probably because you're not using JIS screwdrivers, all right? So you want to make sure we'll do that. Nick, you're in your shop working on your bike with this gloomy Michigan weather today. I don't know. It's kind of nice. I like the 70 degrees and cloudy. I'm kind of cool with it. So uh, sweet. What? Yeah, you're working. I forget what bike you're working on, uh, but you did your carburetor yesterday. Ultrasonic cleaner. Hey, got my ultrasonic cleaner sitting right back here. There it is. Hopefully be dumping some stuff into that. We'll see how the day actually goes. So yeah, let's go. Dive in. JIS screwdrivers. Take these rusty old screws right out of here, guys. I might move over the other camera so I can give you guys some uh, some angles, some exciting action shots. I think that'd be good. 81 Kawasaki KE100. Nice. Carburetors, man, they're, they're finicky. Man, you got to get them right. I think on each one of my rebuilds, at some point, I've had to go back in and just tweak something on my carburetor. So you wanna take your time and you wanna get it right and get the jets right, get the right size jet. <laughs> Make sure those diaphragms aren't ripped either. That's a big, big deal. Yeah, carburetor day. It's kind of a day all into itself and you know, it depends how filthy they are too, I guess, but uh, it can be quick, but uh, with these restoration bikes that I'm dealing with most of the time, it's usually a nightmare and it usually takes a really, really long time to deal with that so let's see if we can pop this cover off of here if it wants to there we go so if you've never seen this stuff before here's how it works and these are the kahein japan let's see it says 3d on the side there's a model number on here someplace but these are the pretty standard carburetors that you're going to see on the vintage hondas all right it's going to be pretty straightforward uh, very 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 similar as you go throughout but anyway you've got your cover you got your notch in the top and then there's going to be your spring. Do not forget to put the spring. I actually put together a carburetor uh, one time and forgot to put the spring in. And I was wondering what the hell's going on. The other thing I'll encourage you guys to as well, man. Uh, stay organized. Keep all your parts nice and laid out. And uh, again, take your time at your local Home Depot. I'm not sure if they have them at Home Depot. But I, 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 uh, I was able to pick up a set uh, for about 20 bucks uh on amazon and uh, they came really really quick i actually have a link to those in the description of my uh, videos 
uh, there's a link. Uh, you can go and download those. So I just pulled this little piece off here. It's like that. It's a broken throttle cable. So this is junk. We'll throw that in the in the trash bin. Now here is our diaphragm. And let's see if we can get, take a close look at this. On the surface, it looks okay. But what I'm seeing is, is that it's out of position. This, this carburetor is totally out of position because there's a little tab here. And that tab needs to go into this notch. How can I show you that a little bit better? See that notch right here? Well, somebody put this diaphragm in a little kitty wumpus, all right? And it actually smushed that tab. So we'll find out if this is, oh, wow, that just popped right out of there. That is not how it goes. Um, usually, I mean, uh, Joe, I would just go to the Home Depot site, honestly, and, uh, you know, do a search and see if they actually have that stuff. I'm going to get in a little bit closer here. All right, so here you go. Be careful peeling back your diaphragm. This diaphragm might still be good. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll test it here in just a second. But what you want to do is you want to just pry it all up around the whole outside kind of perimeter. And then what you want to do is you want to just try to pull it out. And this one, ooh, this carburetor is going to be a problem, guys. This slide is seized inside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gently grab my screwdriver and I'm gonna push up on this, see if we can break it free. But right off the bat, guys, there, we got it. It popped out of there, but oh boy, it's dirty, 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 dirty in there. Get on the ground here. That popped out, but so what this tells me is this isn't gonna be easy. Look at how some kind of an adhesive, it's a, um, God, I don't know if that would be fuel, maybe ethanol fuel. I know ethanol fuel will gum up carbs really, really bad. Um, but that really, that's not a good sign for these carburetors. But we'll, uh, we'll do our best to try and clean these bad boys up. No worries. So the next thing you want to do is just want to see is, are we in this for 30 bucks already? And, uh, you know, you got to get good diaphragms without holes in them. All right. So... If we pass this test, we save $30. And again, remember guys, I wanna do a budget buy on this motorcycle. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna slightly, just gently kind of pull this material and be looking for any tears, any pinholes, anything like that in the diaphragm. Do it from both sides. Looking for any kind of a tear. Let's see, I'm, I'm developing a little tear right there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but there, it's developing a tear. Yeah. Might be able to run it for a little while, but I have a feeling that that start of a tear is going to become a real tear. <laughs> er, <laughs> it's going to become a tear. -er. <laughs> and that's going to be 30 bucks um, in order to do that. Yeah, there's a slight start of a tear. Yeah, and it's kind of going through both sides. So I would put a giant question mark <laughs> on top of, of that diaphragm for sure. All right, inside here, you can see all the gumminess, all this gumminess inside of this carburetor. It's all down inside this shaft. That's going to take some work to clean up. All right, let's flip this thing over and uh, grab your JIS screwdriver and go and do it. Hey Nick, uh, what's your timeline? When are you gonna have a bike ready to ride? Is it a full restoration or is it just a, let's get this thing running and on the road? We're running out of, we're running out of motorcycle weather here in Michigan. I think we've only got, I don't know, if we're lucky, maybe a month and a half, maybe two months. Can we get to Halloween? I'm not sure. Usually it's a, uh, the snow usually falls, um, you know, before Halloween, at least that's kind of how I always anticipate it. So, all right, let's pull this bowl off of here. And surprisingly, based on how bad the, uh, the top of this thing was with the slide, this doesn't look really all that bad. This doesn't look all that bad at all. Full restoration. God, I love it. I love it. Uh, everything torn down, have it ready for spring. Awesome. Yeah, man, they're, they're a bit of a, they're a bit of a, you know, I'd say 
My restorations, based on how much time I have, they're about a year project. You know, I usually start them in the summer and I usually get them out by, by spring. So yeah, that's about right. Cool, you gotta send some pictures that way. Yeah, Dennis, spend $30 now or spend it later. I'm gonna be spending it later. Um, I do have some other junk carbs on the shelf back here um, that I may have some parts from that I may be able to use, but okay. So this is like dust. <laughs> Um, how dust gets inside the carburetor, I'm not 100% sure. These things were a little bit loose when I got them on the bowl. Let's see if we can get our drain plug out. That'll be another miracle and a half. This is your bowl drain. It's turning, but oh man. Hear that? You know something hasn't moved in a while when it makes that sound. Oh, might have to get some... Uh, some penetrating oil, some lubricant going on this thing. Can't hurt. Get some down in here. So the, the drain hole is down in the bottom of the bowl, just like that. So I'll let that sit a second and uh, we can come back to that. But let's keep diving in to the carburetor. Basic disassembly on this is, is pretty straightforward as well. Um, main thing here, here's your two jets. And these should, in theory, just pull out of here. Here's kind of your stop for your float. Okay, your float, the, the carburetor actually sits like this. All right, uh, that's how do I show that? Boop, this thing is in the way, that's kind of annoying. It just kind of holds that in place. First thing I think I'd like to do is see if I can get the, uh, the float bowl pin to move. That came out. I, I can't believe it. I mean, based on how terrible it is, um, we'll do that. So this, there's a pin, a little brass pin. You just slowly kind of pull that out. Boy, everything is so dirty. It's just a pin, nothing crazy. And that holds your bowls in, your, your floats in. It's like that. Now the first thing I'm gonna do with these bowls, or these floats, excuse me, is I'm gonna go drop them into a bucket of water. I got a bucket of water over here and uh, here, let me move you over there Doop. and I'm gonna strap those in there see if they got leaks all right sometimes it can take a little while for a leak to show itself so I always just throw it in some water see what's going on there next step these should in theory just pull straight out I'm gonna move this camera just a little bit it's like right in my arm space and I think that'll give you a little bit better light too it's like that this should in theory just kind of pull straight up that one wants to move again be gentle with everything don't go cramming and wrenching on on everything um, take your time these are uh, therapeutic things okay therapeutic things I'll definitely probably go with a full new jet set I mean why not I'm already in here so uh, so Dennis that would be you know another 30 bucks so this stuff gets out of control really, really fast. Yeah, this one's pretty seized on there too. My deep creep can is getting a little, little light. Yeah, that first jet wants to come out. The second one, not so much. I don't want to bend that. While we wait for the deep creep to kind of work its way through, let's see if we can dump our, our needle out. There we go. So this is springy yet. There's a little spring on the end of this. Feels good. These can all go in the ultrasonic cleaner from what I understand and, and we can, you know, probably use some of this again. Back to your JIS, we're gonna go back down here. I don't recall, I don't have a parts list in front of me what exactly all of these things are called. So forgive me, I should know. Pull one little screw out. There's one little retainer right here. And one little aspect of this retainer is that there's a slight downward bend on this piece of metal here. So you want to make sure when you reinstall it that you're pointing those fins all the way down, okay? That's going to be a big important thing to hold this down. So I need a little pair of needle nose pliers. Again, I'm going to probably buy a whole new kit. All right, I'm going to probably buy a whole new carburetor kit for this. And, uh, you know, let's see if we can get this out. Yeah, that popped right out. That was actually really, really easy. O-ring looks to be in pretty good shape yet. I don't know, what do you guys think? Can you just throw these in the ultrasonic and make sure you clean them really well and 
reuse the original parts. I don't see why not. If you could get them really, really clean, that would be huge. Save me some money, man, because uh, these things are a, are a money pit, let me tell you. Let's see if I can get this one out just gently. Give it some persuasion there. We got it to move. Pull this one out. There we go. And there we have both of our jets. I just dropped one of them down there. That's fine. But we'll put these parts aside too. And again, just keep things, you know, kind of organized on the workstation. The other thing, this little black plug, this little black plug here. See it right here and pop that out. These are tough to find. Do not lose it. These are hard to find. So I'm going to put this on eBay for $70. <laughs> I'll have to get my jeweler screwdrivers out to get uh, get this one out. Um, let's get this old hunk of hose off of here too. Again, we're going to do full, all, all in. Uh, see, this is pretty typical. This happens a lot when these brass fittings come out of these. So this is your main fuel line on your carburetor right here, okay? And your hose goes on here. And this actually happened to me while I was riding once. Um, the plug actually came out and it fell out and spilled gas all over the place. I can't believe it didn't like start a fire or something, but there's a little brass fitting in here and that's gonna have to get pounded back into position as well. All right, well, not a whole ton of good news so far, but I mean, that's kind of what, what we expect. Quite honestly, just dropped my little brass piece. I'd like to try and get this hose off of there. I'll get that off later. We can cut that. Really, I just want to get it disassembled and get things going. Yeah, that fuel line fitting, I'm surprised. They're just a pressure fit. They just kind of pound in there, uh, but they fall out and they're, it's kind of scary. Um, I could just look down and gas was pouring out. I was like, what in the world? Fire hazard. Greetings from Greece. Dude, welcome to the stream. Awesome, thanks for joining. Let's get this bracket out of the way. This is another kind of a tough piece. So this actually links your chokes together between your two carburetors because we're, we're working on a, on a 1970 twin cylinder Honda. Boy, this stuff is so dirty and crusty. So dirty. I really need my jeweler screwdrivers. That's what I really, really, really need. Um, I'm starting to get my shop slowly organized to where I actually know where things are. And that's been a huge, huge benefit. So a jeweler screwdriver might be able to get down in here and just pry this out. Let's see if we can draw some blood. Let's see if I can jam this screwdriver into my finger. There we go. See, there's a, just a little locker on here. It's just a little locking kind of washer thing. You just gotta bend these two tabs out so you can get this, this throttle, this uh, choke connection taken out of here. Pretty low key stream today, guys. Not gonna go float around Arizona on balloons, you know, not jumping my motorcycle over a cliff or anything like that. We're just working on some carburetors. And if I get sick of working on carburetors, I'll uh, go over and we'll see if we can get this front hub apart. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I wonder, do I gotta go get my crescent wrench or do you think this is gonna turn with just a plier? Hey, it turned. All right, so here is kind of where you want to pay attention to how things go together a little bit. So you're gonna have your nut, okay, got your nut. And I'm just gonna kind of flop this stuff back upside down so I can lay it all in the way it is. And then there's gonna be a flat, a flat metal washer. This is that locker that, we, that you bend up the ends on, okay? We can flatten that before we put it back on the bike, but that's gonna go down onto my nut over here. And we've got kind of a locker right here. Just to make sure that doesn't turn. That goes on the bottom end. And then this bracket's going to pull right off and we can get this the hell out of the way, which I love. Okay. Now, for the time being, there is also another flat washer underneath here as well. Okay. But for now, I'm just going to put it all right back. Okay. I'm going to put it all right back so it's all there. 
when the time comes. I don't want to lose that stuff. It's very high potential. These are pretty small little pieces. Probably end up losing, losing some stuff. So we'll probably take these throttle shafts out based on how filthy everything is. Here's another part. Just start stripping it down. Here's where your throttle cable gets connected to each one of your carburetors. Just one screw. That's all it is. One JIS screw. And then there's one locking. How can I show you that? One little locking washer on there. <clears throat> I can pull this off just like that. And I'm going to put this screw back in there too because I don't want to lose that. And set this aside. This is old. This is junk. Uh, where's my pliers? We can just back this thing out. I don't need this. Broken cable. This is where your cable actually connects to your carburetor. So that's junk. Um, yeah, I'm just going to I'm gonna pitch it. I got to start getting a little bit more ruthless with some of my parts because I'm starting to... Uh, Get a lot of stuff laying around the shop. That's getting kind of nasty. All right, I got my jeweler screwdriver out. So now we can go back to where that, that plug was, that black plug. Inside there, there is a little jet. And we'll see. Ah, I'm gonna have to PB blast that. That ain't coming out, you can already tell that. Oh, my can's dying. Can's dying, guys, the can is dying. Can's dying on me here. All right, got our jets, got that soaking in. We could probably go ahead and knock out our two jets that are down in here. So the, so here's two right here, right here. And you actually, they're a pressure fit as well, just like that fuel line we were just looking at. And you actually drive them out from down below. I don't think I have my little, my little stick. The little stick works pretty good or like a plastic, hard plastic stick. You can push those out of there. Yeah, I'll have to go find that. Uh, yeah, it's not looking good when I look inside here. This is much dirtier than any of the other ones I've had to deal with before. Let's go ahead and pull out this throttle slide right here. One thing that I think is worth doing as well is to mark your butterfly valve. So you make sure you put it in the right way. All right, so I'm going to clean this, but I'm going to mark it because this valve in here, this this valve, this metal piece right here, that needs to go in the right way, okay? There's a small taper on one of the ends, and uh, you can screw that up. So I'm just going to mark it with a black marker for now so I know that that is how that's going to go, and we can put it back together just the way that it's supposed to. Hit these with a little bit of deep creep as well. Should have put my gloves on. Why don't I, I got a whole box. I got a whole freaking box of gloves laying right here. Uh, for some reason, I just never put gloves on. I just never, never put them on. I, I, I don't know why I do that. Don't know why. It would make life so much easier. I wouldn't look so hideous when I'm out in public. All right, so I'm gonna need my smaller one, JAS here. All right, that turned. Be careful with these screws. Put a lot of pressure down in on them because these screws, um, they will 100% strip out on you. And then you got a real booger because they're gonna be, I think they're almost impossible to get out. I mean, I don't know how, I guess you'd have to grind it out with a Dremel and then find a replacement screw. So I'm putting quite a bit of downward pressure on my screwdriver right now because I do not want to strip these little screws out. Be careful with that, I've done that. Put that over there. See, this one's turning good too, just like that. And we'll get those out, and then this gets a little kind of weird, it gets a little tricky on this part. Boom, just like that. What we'll need here, I'm just gonna grab, you know, just to expedite things and, and to showcase that, you know what, you don't need a whole ton of ton of uh, tools to work on these things. I'm just gonna grab my crescent wrench or my adjustable wrench and take this bolt off on this side of that throttle valve. And we'll just take this off. Now again, pay attention to the order of things. I think that's really, really, really important that you do that. Okay, we've got our nut, 
And now, of course, my fingernails are useless. We've got one locking washer, okay? Go like that. And now this spring assembly is gonna need to come out. And this should really come out as one piece. Okay, so here's kind of your spring assembly. Where's the camera? There we go. There's our spring assembly here. This just pulls straight off of this shaft, okay? This should just pull straight off. So just grab the whole thing. There's a little hold right here where my finger is, and this whole thing should just pull straight up. So I'm gonna push this up, get it off the stay. There, I've released tension on my spring. As soon as you release tension on the spring, this whole thing should just rock right out just like that. And then here we've got our spring. Now note how the connector goes. The connector on the spring is right here on the top for you, okay? And it just kind of latches in right here. Hope you guys can see that. But it just latches in right there. And uh, for now, I'll just leave this as it is, put that back over here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that locking washer, or no, actually I'm gonna take that shaft out so I don't need to do that. So I just need to keep this all together. So I'm gonna just move this over on my table and kind of deal with that. Okay, next order of business. This can be a little tricky. We gotta get this butterfly valve out and oh my God, this one like slid right away. Now that you've got it kind of free, you can just pull this straight out. Boom. And try to remember your orientation. Um, I'm looking at this piece and my number, okay, my number is on my uh, line side. So my number is actually on the bottom. Yeah, so that's how that is gonna work. Or yeah, no, goes like this. Numbers go towards the top. Interesting, cool. So anyway, important to mark that. We'll clean that part as well. Now with that out, let's see how lucky we can get. This whole shaft assembly should push out. Ah, wow, awesome. Here's the trouble, here's a troublesome spot on these carburetors. It has been uh, a major headache for me a lot of times. There's little felt washers in here. Make sure those are in good condition and make sure that you lubricate those extremely well when you put the carburetor back together, okay? Basically, let's just push this shaft through and pull it out. Make sure you get all the parts with it, okay? Give it a little finesse, pull it out. There's our shaft. Now let's take a closer look at this because there's a bunch of different parts on here. We've got, looks to be like a little plastic washer. And then we have, there's some sort of a retainer here. So there's a little plastic washer here. There's a little retainer clip. It's actually a C-clip on there. Another washer, your felt washer, a plastic washer, and then your assembly right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave all those parts in place and then I'm gonna go back and just put kind of this whole column back together. Keep it all together. Just try to keep as many pieces as you possibly can. Keep it all together. Guys, thanks so much for joining the stream today. Um, needed a little therapeutic day, man. Needed a little bit of time just to do something kind of calm and cool. So I'm glad that uh, you guys are joining me for the stream, thanks so much. Let's go ahead and do the same operation here on this choke plate. Let's get the choke plate out, same deal. Be careful with these screws, downward pressure on them. You don't wanna strip them out. That one turned, and that one turned. All right, we got lucky, guys, we got lucky. I'd love to hear what you guys are working on. Um, Nick's working on an 81 Kawasaki KE100. It's not a Honda, but you know what? He's he's a cool guy. All right, we'll, we'll give him a we'll give him a pass on that. Okay, uh, but what are you guys working on, or what are you guys dreaming of working on? You know, you got your first bike. Are you a pro? Are you sitting there armchair quarterbacking me every 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 way along the way? I absolutely love those comments when they come in on the videos. Learn a lot. Learn a lot from you guys. With those two screws out, this choke plate is going to come right out. You don't really have to worry about marking the orientation on this one because there's really only one way that this goes in. Um, just remember your flap goes towards the inside, but again, there's really no other way to put it in. It goes one way. 
One thing you do want to inspect though, and make sure that it's operating is that your door is operating properly. There's a really small spring right here, really small spring. And I've seen a couple of them now um, where the springs are actually broken and that can be problematic. It can kind of hurt your starting from what I've read. Um, you might, might have cold start problems um, if, you, if you have that. So, all right, we'll get our choke plate. We'll put that over there. And then I guess I didn't have to put these, these pieces back on again because I was gonna take this all apart. But again, just keep everything in order. Keep everything in order. Be meticulous about how you're doing that stuff. And this shaft is gonna pull out. Here's the direction. So here's kind of the end of it. It's kind of a blunt end. This shaft just pulls out just like this. And that's it, okay? So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and reinstall all of those nuts and bolts and washers and locking washers and all that good stuff. We'll put all this stuff back together so it's all one. And everybody's a happy, happy camper here. All right, take that, put that by the choke plate. Um, I'm a little paranoid, I'm not gonna lie, about these. now. I, I've never really seen people replace these before, but man, like, look at this. What is this buildup that we have going on here? It's like some sort of a, I'm trying to see if I can scrape it off. Maybe the ultrasonic is gonna do okay. I missed one question. Somebody asked something about the cleaner. What, what was that one? Purchased the bike, uh, da, 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 da. Home Depot, do, 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 do. the cleaner expensive. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, uh, Joe. The cleaner is not expensive. I mean, it, it, expensive is a relevant, uh, a relative term, right? Um, that thing, yeah, I'm gonna get every dollar that I <laughs> purchased that for in cleaning carburetors on on these different bikes. It was eighty dollars, eighty dollars, and it does a bang up job for your carburetors. Uh, I don't know, if I could go back in time, I would have bought a little bit bigger um, ultrasonic cleaner. It looks like this stuff is just scraping off. Enough that I could fit one whole carburetor in it. I think that would have been really nice. This one's a little small. You kind of got to do, do it side to side. For those of you who just joined, just that ultrasonic cleaner hanging out over here. Just a little cheapy, but it does the job. I used it on the 1972 and it did a good job. So I was pleased with that. But this gumminess inside of here has me a little bit, a little bit paranoid. Not a huge fan of uh, fan of that. Um, we'll, we'll see how good things clean up. Now back, let's see if we can break this one free where that black plug was. After a little bit of deep creep, might need to go and get a little aggressive here. We got it, that helped. I think we got it. It's hard to tell, man, with these damn gloves on. Yep, there it is. Wow, look at that, there you go. There it is, this is the only one that's gonna be threaded, all right, that you're gonna have to deal with. So there it is, and keep your old ones, man. When you take them out, don't throw them away because you gotta go and refer back and see what numbers these were. Make sure you get the numbers going right. All right, I'm gonna need to find my little punch, unless I can just get lucky and kind of just push these out of here. <clears throat> no, those aren't gonna just pop out of there. But screwdriver, ah, oh, I got the perfect thing. I got the perfect thing that'll help me here. I've got this super, super small GIS screwdriver that I think is going to drop in there just fine. Actually, I need my little rubber mallet, too. I tell you what, being organized in the shop rocks. It rocks. Whoops. Kicked the camera there, guys. Sorry about that. What do you got? Kawasaki. A police bike. Dude, is it the police bike from, uh, uh, Chips. I grew up watching Chips, man, the television show. And I think they had, I think, would they have 1,000, uh, 1,000 Kawasaki's in that? That's awesome. 
That's awesome. Doug just started restoring an 81 Suzuki GS250T. It's awesome, man. I wish that the chat would let us pop photos in and out. I understand how that could be problematic. Oh, this plastic is, is too soft, too soft. I need to find something a little bit better here. Um, because how cool would that be if you could just like drop a photo into the chat and then we could like be sharing each other's little victories and stuff. I think that would be really, really cool. And all the different projects, I'm on the lookout. Actually, I've, got, I've still got this bike. I've still got that, uh, this, this one to finish. I've got a friend's uh, CB that I'm gonna be working on here over the winter as well, uh, hopefully, I hope so. Um, but I'm still looking. I always am keeping my eyes out um, for bikes and just trying to uh, find more parts. There's a guy about six hours away that has a couple of CBs over in Wisconsin that I really, really want. He's got some awesome tanks um, that I would love. Uh, he's got a couple frames. Um, yeah, I'm kind of becoming a little bit of a parts hoarder. The goal is to get all of that, <laughs> all of that motorcycle parts. So I think that'll be kind of fun. Um, and just keep kind of building this stuff out. I'm trying to find the most perfect tool to be able to knock these things out. And I don't want to be like crazy aggressive. But I do have my punch and my punch, you know, would do it. I do have brass punches though, you know, I have brass punches. I'm, I found them. Oh my god, guys! I'm actually, I'm actually getting freaking organized. Um, this is amazing. All right, back to the carburetor. All right, here we go. Give me a little angle here. Yeah, I think honestly, it would be so cool to find one of those chip spikes, and uh, <laughs> and uh, restore one of those. That would be super super fun. That's, that, that might be that that might get me away from Honda a little bit. I'm just gonna use this brass punch. Brass punches are great because uh, you know they, they they they're gonna do very little marring to things as we're working on things. Very soft, and these jets are brass as well. That moved. I'm gonna need a little bit bigger punch on this other one. Knock these things out. Oop, one's on the floor. We'll get that later. Just kind of reach down inside here. Give those a little tappy tap. And they're not quite out yet, so I'm gonna to have to go to, do, 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 do. let's go back to this one and give this one another little tappy tap. I think that might have done her. And we'll go down here. Just be careful not to bash up your aluminum, all right? Just go, go slow, you know? I think that's the biggest thing is Take your time. Stuff isn't a race. We're not in a race here. Let's see if we got these out. There's one. I'd hit that other one just a little bit more. Yeah, I'd say that these uh, need to be replaced. I, I would say that these need to be replaced. These are garbagey looking. Garbagey looking. What did I do with that other punch? There we go. Let me just go on down here. Again, this brass punch set I got off of Amazon. I swear, like fifteen dollars. And for what we're doing on these bikes, man, I mean, you, you don't need, you, you really don't need a whole ton. Here's another one. I would think. But again, I didn't see anybody answer that question. Can we just ultrasonically clean a lot of these jets and, and, and things like that and uh, reuse them? I would think so. All right, we'll go ahead and we'll take this off too because we're going to give this thing a, a little washy wash in the ultrasonic. So there's our first one. I've never seen these be replaced, so I don't really know. What the hell? Yeah, so these are dirty, 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 dirty. So I think maybe the first thing that we do, first thing that we should probably do is just give this a good wash, okay? Let's just let's just get, get a good wash going here. Um, let me clean up the workstation here just a little bit. Stay organized. You don't be throwing your tools all over the place. You know, keep stuff nice and clean. You'll be good to go. Man, I feel like this is a really chill stream today. Is that okay with you guys? Awesome, Nick. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, why not? I mean, as long as they're not damaged or scraped up too bad, shouldn't be too big of a problem. 
Awesome. Oh, we got to take a, take apart our diaphragm. Okay, that body is pretty much complete. The body's done, but we do have to get this diaphragm taken apart here. So on to the old dental pick. This is going to be tough to show you. It's featured in one of the videos really, really well on the channel. Um, there's a little spring kind of uh, holder down here. So I want to pull that out and dump it out. Just like that. These are impossible to find, okay? Do not break these. Do not break these. Treat these with great respect, okay? These are not available. Here is that. Yeah, these are all really dirty. And everything has this, like, gummy corrosion on it. You just feel it on the, on the surfaces. And then there's that spring, that spring clip that I just took out, okay? It's just like that. So we've got that. All right. I guess we could take our old gaskets out as well. Since we've got our dental pick here, there's an O-ring that goes all the way around here. Now the odds of us getting this out in one shot, because this is going to be dry and brittle, can just about guarantee it. Again, dental pick is such a great tool for all these kinds of things. This is going to come in a carb kit. You're going to get new O-rings, but you got to get the old ones out. Yeah, this is like, I should just turn this into an ASMR channel, honestly. There, as you get it started, hopefully we can just kind of, ah, no, I'm going to have to go a little bit, a little bit at a time. And again, be really careful not to scratch up anything. It's coming. You know, a little heat, heat gun, I bet would be really helpful in this right now. Just to kind of soften things up a little bit because these are really brittle. Really, really brittle. Yeah, see how it's just kind of breaking off one piece at a time. It's like when I'm making videos, if I'm doing stuff like this, I can just edit stuff out, you know, and be fine. Joe, if you're putting together a show bike, can that carburetor be dipped into chrome or powder coated? I would assume, well, honestly, dude, I wouldn't do that. I mean, there's a lot of passages and, and things in these carburetors. What I would do is, I bet, these are aluminum, I'm almost positive. Why would not just polish them? I mean, we could try and, and polish these bowls up and make them look super fancy, fancy, fancy. Um, I don't know the answer to that, but my guess would be uh, no, um, because there are all of these little passages. Like you go drop this into a chrome tank, it ain't gonna run. I, I don't, especially for how finicky they are, you know, just in general, you know. Um, I have seen like show carburetors or show chrome parts, things like that. That might just be like an entirely different breed of cat in parts. I, I definitely wouldn't just do like a home DIY on that. Be like, cool, I'm gonna dip this into some chrome or powder coat it. Because again, there's all of those little, little passages that need to be clear. Um, yeah, that's next level, dude. Um, I would, I, I'm, I'm not that guy um, to go to that level on these things. Especially this bike, I'm not doing super crazy detail on this bike. I want it cool looking and functional and one that I'm not going to feel bad about maybe bashing around just a little bit and having some fun with it. I, I think I'm leaning towards the apocalypse bike. I think I'm going to do the apocalypse bike. I'm going to do kind of rhino liner stuff. Just real basic. Really cool looking though. So there we got that gasket out. That wasn't too bad. But again, we'll have to clean out this whole channel. That's going to be a part of the gig as well. And really, man, I mean, that's that's it. I mean, this is ready for, for re really ready just for, for a bath is what this is. I'm going to take all this old gasket material and throw that away. Get it out of here. We don't need it in our lives. I, on uh, my first two builds, I like literally saved every piece of broken gasket, every piece. Of, like I, I was, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Um, but I thought it was important to save your original parts. I don't know. Whatever. That, that, that uh, fantasy is really 
wore off here now that we're on to bike three. I do think I'm going to need, yeah, I'm going to need a diaphragm. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to mark this one. I'm going to put a Q on it. And a Q in my book, though, is going to be replace it. Because, you know, getting these things going is kind of hard enough as it is. Um, it's hard, hard enough as it is, but you don't want to have to go back and chase stuff that you, uh, that you thought you fixed, right? So next step, I'm going to just grab a Ziploc bag. I'm going to button up, just get all these parts in here. Keep everything together. That's, that's the main goal. Keep everything together in one bag, carburetor to carburetor. And just keep everything together. That's, that's, that's the main goal here. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I don't need that old gas line. Throw it away, Brian. Jesus. Come on. I'll keep that out. Let me throw these covers in. You know, just stay organized as best as you possibly can. Now, the other thing. Got to check this float this float bowl for, for leaks as well. I think that's kind of, a, kind of an important deal. I had a bunch of pinholes in one or actually in both of the carburetors that I had on the 72. That's in a video, right? Yeah, um, there was a bunch of pinholes down in the bottom. Not seeing that on this. this. This actually looks pretty clean. But a guy in the comments gave a brilliant freaking um, idea that I would love to try one day. And he said, uh, if you have pinholes in your bowls, you can go and use tank liner to do this. I happen to have some here, um, like a red coat, kind of stuff like this. I was going to tank, uh, uh, line a tank. I, I actually didn't do that. And, uh, yeah, you know, I said just line the inside of the bowl if it has pinholes with this. I was like, well, shoot. I mean, maybe that's worth a shot. It's worth a shot. I mean, I'm pretty much game for anything. I mean, if we have, you know... Why not? It's worth a shot. Um, okay, grab all these parts. These are all going to go into the ultrasonic uh, separately, and we will clean all of it. But I just want to keep it all out of the way right now and keep all my parts together. Yeah, Nick, uh, you can paint the outside, but definitely not anything that would coat the internals. Yeah, and I don't know how you would do that with like powder coating, you know, the, just the nature of powder coating. I'm not sure how that would, how that would work, um, and especially not chrome, because chrome, from what I understand, that whole process is, you know, submerging that whole part. So, I definitely, I, I, I would, I, I would recommend against that. So again, I'm just gonna stay organized. I just like being organized. It makes life just a little bit easier. So I'm going to just do C1, and I'll put a little 70, boom, just like that. Could say CL70. <laughs> hey, happy accident, man. Happy accident, good to go. I need a little sippy sip of my coffee. Now I'm kind of feeling like I'm going to, uh, going to the ultrasonic here. Here it is. Let's give you a little bit of elevation. I need like a little U2 sounder, you know, that uh, goes into uh, elevation. Every time I say that, because I say that a lot. We'll plug this in. I'm telling you what, best 80 bucks I ever spent as far as cleaning stuff. It's beautiful. So what I want to do is I'm going to go heat on. So I'm going to heat everything up. And I'm just going to do Dawn dish soap to start. Okay. So I'm going to put some Dawn in there. And then I'm just going to take some water. Be careful with my water. And fill this up to the line. Just like that. Let this thing warm up a little bit, and uh, we'll, we'll get to some get to some fun, fun stuff. Again, this was like 80 bucks. You know, not a big deal. 
Nick, you can paint the outside, but definitely not anything that would coat the internals. Yeah, yeah, we can mask off powder coating. You just need high temp vinyl tape made for that. Perfect. Dude, you got a powder coater? You wanna do a couple frames for me? <laughs> Give me a deal on some frames. That'd be cool. Yeah, I'm always kind of on the fence though. Like, like when it comes to frames too though. Like, should I, should I powder coat them? Because they weren't powder coated, you know, originally. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find myself a couple little brass brushes. Here, I got a little vinyl brush. This will be good. I'm gonna drop this in here and just give it kind of a once over. Just kind of wash it, scrape away any kind of the heavy stuff. This stuff is, is I mean, it's not moving at all. Just kind of hit some of the trouble areas on this. And we'll see how good, I mean, you guys saw how kind of crappy it was. We'll see how many runs it takes, but I did find, you know, when I did this the last time, spending some time up front and getting into some of these nooks and crannies can really save you a lot of time um, on running cycles. So just wash it. I mean, I could have done this in my bucket too, I guess, but whatever. I need buckets. That's what I need. I need to like, you know, I used to have like old ice cream buckets, you know, but I don't need ice cream anymore. And I kind of miss the buckets, you know? And sadly you can't buy ice cream buckets unless you buy ice cream. It's like really kind of a bum deal. Have you guys ever noticed that? You ever noticed that? It's impossible to buy a bucket unless there's ice cream in it. At least that's what I've heard. I'm, I'm totally turning this into an ASMR channel. I'm 100% doing that. I'm doing it. ASMR. I'm going to get a couple of those ear microphones. And you guys can just listen to this stuff. It's kind of relaxing, not gonna lie. Ooh, the water's nice and warm, it's starting to come up. You can kind of feel it. Oh, you can't do anything that big in Kalamazoo? You're in Kalamazoo, huh? I didn't know that, I figured you were up north somewhere. Yeah, it's just because I see a lot of your videos. Guys, check out uh, Nick's channel, or, or Nick, you tell people how to find your stuff, because uh, you guys are doing some some awesome, awesome content. Absolutely love it. It's exactly what the industry needs. Both the rims for 90 bucks out the door. Powder coated them, huh? Huh. Huh. Powder coated them black? Or did you do pink? Or did you go like, I'm going all in. I'm doing something different. Fluorescent green, maybe. Something like that. Yeah, there's some bad spots in here, but let's um yeah, this is this was a really troublesome spot right here on these carburetors. There's a lot happening in this space. And uh it's tough, but let's see if we can clean it up. Let's go put this thing on four. So that's just a long run cycle. Now, guys, I here's one thing I do need to know from you as viewers is that when I turn this ultrasonic on, um let me know if it ruins the audio. Let me know, okay? Um, cause it could, it could, the, the frequency on this could really destroy, um, the audio. So as soon as I turn it on, um, guys, let me know in the comments whether or not, um, the, uh, proverbial shit hits the fan. Hopefully it's not too bad. Um, I know when I was filming with my, uh, my phone, I filmed that whole series, uh, the 72 CL series with my phone. And anytime I would get my phone close to the ultrasonic, Hey, Joe, that's the next step guy. That's the next step. Um, just using, I got simple green right here, simple green D, safe for aluminum. I got some right here and, uh, it's fine. Okay. So I'm just doing the Don step first because Don is cheap. Don is disposable. And, uh, 
Yeah, and it cuts through the, that that first layer of grease pretty pretty well. But Joe, yeah, we'll do a run with some simple green after a little while. I'm glad it didn't ruin the audio because um, that that was one of my concerns coming into today for sure. So okay, this thing's cooking away. I guess we can do that. And while we're letting this cook away, I'll just kind of move it over here, keep it in frame. And oh, let's throw this thing in there. There's room, room for that in there too. Let's do it. Let's tear this other carburetor apart. Oh, look at this old hose. So is this the original hose? This stuff is really, really thin, much thinner than the stuff I get from Common Motor. And, and, and also, by the way, I noticed this while I was looking at it. What is the purpose of there being a hose on your overflow? Do people just put hose on those? I've never seen people have hose on that and uh, doing that. Thanks, Doug. I'm glad you're not hearing any interference. That uh, definitely is good news. Oh, one thing I forgot. I need to dive in here. And I need to take that drain plug out. Got to take that drain plug out so we can clean out that passage. Oh, God. Oh, God. You guys, that, that is the sound of restoration. Oh, man, it is marring the shit out of that, too. Oh, come on. Wow. The yeah, that's a booger right there, guys. I have a couple extra ones of these screws, so. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. I think we might have it now. Oh. oh, man. It's a really soft little screw, too. Boy, it just gets hung up there. We're so close. If it was on the bike, it'd be draining. We got it out past the drain hole, so that's good. That's tough. Oh. It's just getting stuck right there. So I'm going to go... Ahead. hit this a little bit now I'm on a mission do you guys ever get on like a mission with one of your parts and be like you know what not today drain screw not today we're gonna get this fucker out of bugger we're gonna get I gotta stop swearing there we go there's that sound sound of screws not moving oh. almost put a hole right in my thumb on that one Boy, that, these things are filthy. 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 I'm actually going to put a little rubberage on this just a little bit. And really only because I know I have a few of these left. Oops, sorry about that. I have a couple of these in a, in a bin. So I'm not worried about... This particular one, it's a lot easier to just kind of gently get this out of here. There, I think it's going now. This helps a lot. That's <laughs> a pair of vice grips. <laughs> Keep it in the crock pot. It does look like a little crock pot. Um, you know, this little one, I don't think it's like as powerful as some of the bigger ones. I usually do a few cycles on it. It's about... 400 seconds, I think, is the uh, is this cycle. But I'll, I'll probably end up doing multiple cycles on these because it, it, it never does it in the first try. Now, some of the bigger ones I've seen, they do a real knock-up job. So anyway, let's go ahead and drop that in there now. It's already looking a little bit better, though. Uh, once we go to the simple, the, uh, simple green D, um, it'll really start to clean it up, but right now I just need to knock off all that, all that dirt, all that grease, all the years of neglect. Somebody who didn't take care of that. Oh God, I sprayed, sprayed deep creep all over my laptop. That's another thing I gotta, gotta be focusing on. You guys really hear it, I bet, when you, when I take the thing off, but hopefully you just hear it and it's not interfering. So, that's good. Let's tear into this one real quick. I won't go so, uh. Slow and meticulous on this one because we've uh, already done that. And also, there's a full-blown video on my YouTube channel where I go painfully slow. <laughs> 
through the whole process, man. Uh, go check out that playlist. That playlist is, uh, what, 200 and seven videos or something now it's over 40 hours of restoration content um, i mean it literally took a you know wheeled a bike into the, into the garage and went step by step filmed every aspect of rebuilding that bike so go check it out i can throw a link up later here too well let's see there that popped off there's our spring so again we'll just lay start laying things out here now this one was actually put together correctly. See the little, where's my dental pick? Where's my dental pick? So I can point at this, cause this is important. When you put your diaphragms in, you need to make sure that the notch in the diaphragm is lining up to the notch here. So your diaphragm, if you have an original diaphragm, it'll have a little tab on it. Make sure you align it. Um, let's take it out because I know some of the reproductions or the new ones don't have those notches so let's make sure that you orient your new diaphragm in the right way so when you get it just in case it doesn't have that tab so we're looking at the carburetor sitting as it would on the bike here let's see so this yep this is exactly it your air cleaner would be your air filter here engine here your tab is going towards the front and if i lift this out which this one isn't lifting out either guys Yep, they're both really gummed up. So I'm gonna need to, again, gently, keyword gently, get in here underneath here and just lift it up. You can see it under there. The other one came free. <clears throat> this one we're not having nearly as much luck with. Wow. Wow. I have, you know, I've done probably four or five sets of carbs in my life. This is a new one. This is a new one for me. <clears throat> Having this slide plugged up like that. That is not moving. And I do not want to be, you know, going crazy with it. So in with the deep creep on this too. Try to get this opened up. Oops, so there's another cycle there. I'm actually just going to do another cycle right off the bat. Because I know it's going to need it. And then I can peel this. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into that shaft there like that, though. Man, I have never seen this before. Something so jammed up in there like that. It's always something new, guys. I really don't want to be crushing on this stuff too much. This one's really bad. The other one was kind of bad. This one's really bad. So let's keep going. Let's keep going. We'll give that a chance to kind of soak in there. And uh, we'll see if we can get that out later. But you guys ever see that before? I think that's a sign of a uh, of a pretty bad carburetor. That's what I'm kind of thinking. Um, yeah. Never easy, guys. And, uh, you know, remember, I do not claim to be an expert. I would claim to be an enthusiast. <laughs> an enthusiast who has a little bit of uh, a little bit of experience maybe because I've been working on these bikes just a little bit. Let me see if I can find that link here real quick. We'll pull this carb bowl off of here. Of course, this has got to be in the way. There we go. Get the bowl off of there. Get our screws. Throw that in there. And we'll go through this whole rigmarole. That all turned. That all turned. You know, overall, it's not too bad. But that, that slide sticking so bad definitely um, is concerning. I'm going to take this that float. I'm going to drop it in that bucket of water down there. Okay. Take this off. Again, we can fly through this one because we've already done that. As soon as I get this carburetor apart, I'll see if I can find that link for you real quick. Otherwise, you can just go to YouTube, um, BV Matson Carb Rebuild. Um, search that, and uh, it should come up. If not, let me know, and I'll send over the link for sure. Oh, come on. There. Yeah, here. This one did the same thing. That brass, that, that brass fitting came right off. Oh, boy. 
Look at this. <laughs> you do not want dust like that in your carburetor. You don't want that. This one will probably clean up okay, though. Well, these left out. All right, these both left it out. Those didn't take any persuasion at all. Those are okay. That's okay. This does have the black cap, so we can deal with that. I am going to do a little deep creep down in there. Go back over here. Find my jeweler screwdriver, my little one. Where'd it go? Getting disorganized again. Drives me crazy. Driving me crazy. Damn thing is so small, too. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Let's see if we can get this jet out. There we go. Just shredded my glove. Yeah, it moved. It's coming. Yeah, these are filthy, though. These are absolutely filthy. I'm actually going to move this other camera. You guys are probably getting a little bored with some of this. So I'm going to give you another angle. Something I can kind of switch between. Get you a little bit different view. A little bit different view of stuff. Boom. Get this tripod up. I love that. I'm so in love with this little setup that I got, though. It's working so nice. So now I should be able to go here and give you a little bit better view. A little bit different view. A little bit closer up, at least. On what we're doing here. We're just trying to get this jet out. All right. Can't do it. Can't do it. Get rid of those gloves. Look at that. Out of there. Oh, it's just like riding in there. It's just stuck in there just a little bit. Super annoying. Super annoying. Man, I have never seen a slide stuck like this before. Diaphragm. This one looks okay. We'll take a closer look at it if we can ever get it out. If. Oh. I want to be really careful not to be marring anything up in here. This might be a might be a job for the heat gun. I just want to move it just a little bit if I can. No bueno, guys. Anybody see this before? Huh. That is not good. That is not good, not good. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead, take my butterflies out, get this all good. This thing's still rolling over here. It's got 118 seconds left on the uh, ultrasonic. I'm doing okay. You guys have suggestions for how to, uh... oh, I wanna mark this as well. Again, number goes to the top. Same kind of deal. Number goes to the top. But you want to make sure. I don't know if it varies from carburetor to carburetor or not. Again, be careful with these screws. They can strip out on you very, very easily. So take it slow. Take it slow and lots of downward pressure. And you should be okay. All right, see if we can get as lucky as we did on this one as we did the other one. Probably not. Looks, I, I, you know, that's so backwards, what I'm doing right there. Not cool, B. Not cool. Uh, I bet that's a 12. I bet that's a 12. Well, in the bet that that's probably a 12. Nope, it's a 10. It's going to be a 10. No, it's an 11, it's an 11. How often do you see that? So 11 on the carb, huh? 
Interesting. All right, there we got a nut. We got our locking nut, just like before. And we can tilt this now. We'll tilt this, and we should be able to pull this butterfly right out of there. It went bloop, bloop, just like that. Pull our spring, just like we did previously. And this whole unit will slide right off, just like that. And uh, we, can, oh, we can actually give this a quick look. Uh, this one, see how we're looking here. Now again, the carburetor isn't fully submerged. But take a look at that. <laughs> Shit, that's just Don, guys. That's just Don. So here's a little trouble spot here yet on this side. It's a little dirty in there. But shoot, this car body here, absolutely almost perfect. So I'm gonna go this side down this time. Go do it again. Oh, heat on, on, go. See what I mean? I, on this smaller one, you just gotta flip things around a lot. And uh, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but whatever you know first world problems push this out Ooh, this one i can see some issues this one might not come out as easily use my rubber hammer here there yeah looks like there's a little bit of corrosion there we go pull that right out just like that i'm gonna go ahead and replace my nut and bolt on here If I can put a nut back on. Oh my God. Sometimes it's like the, the simplest things in the world become the most difficult. All right, so let's flip over to the other side. We will deal with our choke plate. Same deal, I'm just gonna take out, just gonna take out these two screws right here. Remember, Lots of downward pressure. Do not strip them out. Are there any Honda guys in here right now? Anybody working on any Hondas? Saw so, uh, Kawasaki's. I've seen Suzuki's. I've seen. I haven't seen anybody working on a Honda yet. What's up with that? How'd you guys find my channel? Or is it just kind of general motorcycle enthusiast kind of stuff? It's awesome either way. I'm not complaining. I'm happy to have you all here. It's fun. What do we got? We got 11 people watching. That's not bad. I'm pleased. So there we go. And again, just make sure you check. Make sure that your flapper is working and that spring is in good shape. We're in good shape. Got that. Hopefully this will pull straight out. It should. It should. Because this is that the other side carburetor is a little bit different than the other because the controller is on here. Rubber hammer. Pop that out. And there we go. There's our controller. All right. Yeah, your left side carb is always going to have your controller on it. So, okay, we're there. We're there. And, oh, you know what, guys? I totally forgot to pull out a couple of other items that need to be removed from here. I didn't pull out the air mix screw on that car body, so I need to go and do that for sure. Um, pull that out. Take this off. This is all gonna need to be cleaned. This, it's really rusty. This carburetor is, is one of the, in the worst shape that I've probably worked on. Pull this off, hopefully. Yeah, this will be junk. Looks like somebody like cut the cable or something and left the connector in place. Kind of crazy. I don't know why I would ever need that. I gotta start. I gotta start getting a little more ruthless with my parts. There's just no way around it, you know. Let's see. Um, do ba do ba do. I don't have just a a normal flathead screwdriver that'll fit to pull that one valve out, but. One thing at a time. Not the end of the world. I want to make sure that I can get these out. I 
And this slide is really holding us up, holding us up right now, guys. Um, really slowing us up. 2000 Kawasaki Vulcan, been there, did a couple, did a complete rebuild, nice. I have never had this slide issue though, to where the slide just would not pop out of here. Uh, I'm wondering if I gotta start applying some heat. And I, I'm being really careful not to like scratch anything up. You could do a little bit of deep creep. I mean, I could try get it in here. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get it up underneath the sleeve though. I mean, it is what it is at this point. Huh, 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 huh. That is a new one for me. Um, yeah, it's I, I, it might be heat gun territory, which I don't think I have my heat gun down here. I think my heat gun is out in the garage. Oops, sorry about that. Hmm. Man. Yeah, Joe, looks good, right? Yeah, and I haven't even used the simple simple D yet. I might go into here maybe with a brass brush. And you got to get into some of these nooks and crannies a little bit cuz yeah, for some reason they get really 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 corroded. So I might hit this a little bit with the brass brush. should help and look for any other kind of weird there's just weird little nooks that get really heavily stained up but yeah this this one's looking great I'm really pleased with how that's cleaning up here's our here's our side cover or our bowl it's coming out it's still a little dirty though that we're gonna do the, the the soap and then we'll go back and we'll do simple simple D simple green D D use the D don't use the normal simple green um, that's the other deal yeah weird 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 guys this is really weird I've never seen this before uh, I've never seen it to where the that slide will not pop out of there Urgh, he man in it I can't even get this thing out of there oh wow I just popped up on the phone, huh, Joe? That's awesome, man. Mm. Yeah. And it looks like this diaphragm is in good shape. So I, I, I kind of would love to try to salvage it. But I gotta get that slide out. I feel like I'm not sure. I'm not, honestly not sure what to do. Mm. Not strong enough to do that. Oh, let's see. I wonder if I could get. I wonder if I could get like two rods, like through the middle here, just like that. Get like two rods there, and then do like kind of a pull down to see if I could uh, get that out of there. That that might be, that might be an option. Let's see what I got. I got a little screwdriver. Got another little screwdriver. Let's see if this works. Let's see if we can get enough leverage on this to do this. I'm actually going to get this other camera in a different position. We'll do this, this, and slide this in here like that. Slide this one in here like that. Just see if we can get a little bit of leverage on this. I wish I could get this big one through here. Can I get that through there? That's kind of scary. Let's see if I can get a little pressure on it. Let's see. That might have moved it. That moved it, guys. That did it. We got a much bigger gap now. That moved it. But we got a long ways to go. So, insert this again. I'll try to do this up in the air here. Man. 
I have never seen anything like that. Yeah, you can see it. We definitely have moved it. How can I show you that? Still trying to get used to like the lighting and stuff on the live stream. Um, I'll get better at it. Don't worry about that. That is a mess and a half, guys. Oh, it's moving. Oh, I got it. I think I got it. Woo. <laughs> that was a little pressure. Oh, man. It is just, this has to be ethanol fuel. This has to be what people are talking about, the gumming up when people use that ethanol fuel in their vintage motorcycles. This is like a rubber. Look at that. Look at that. It's like a rubber all over this. Wow. I hope that this that the ultrasonic is going to be able to pound through that. Let's take a look at this. Because if it doesn't, we're going to have some problems on our hands. Let's take this carburetor out. Let's see what it's looking like. Yeah, I mean, I'd say this looks pretty damn good. You know, what, maybe that was 10 minutes? Maybe a couple cycles? What number and length are mostly used, Greg? Unless these have numbers on them, which I don't think they do. I'm not sure. These are the two that, were, that there's one here. Where is it here? I keep forgetting about my coffee. There is, and I can find, I'm, I'm actually working on a JIS video right now. Um, I haven't gotten that one edited up yet, but I'm working on it right now. But there's a flat tip JIS, which has that kind of a flat tip. And then there's a pointy one. These are the two. So in the link in my description, um, there's a JIS set. It came with four screwdrivers, and these are the two I only use. So um, if you go look at that description on Amazon, maybe they have the numbers there. Um, but I need to, I'm, I'm doing a video on that. That's on the list. I've shot a part of it. Um, with, and uh, when, I, when, when I forget to drink my coffee, I have a splitting headache at like two o'clock in the afternoon. It's brutal. Yeah, Pat, it's awesome to see you, dude. Thanks for stopping by the stream, having fun, doing something a little bit different. A um, little less editing, a little more chill. Um, and we just kind of muddle through this stuff together. So I'm having, having some fun with it for sure. Oh, what's the Crock-Pot official name? The Crock-Pots, this thing, turn this thing. I would love to upgrade though. Dude, honestly, if you spend another $40, you could get probably a little bit bigger one. And here's the information on this one. So, let's see. Central Machinery, da, 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 da. ultrasonic cleaner is all it says. Serial number, I, I, that must be unique. Hey, yeah, man, that's all it says. That's all it says, that's what it is. That's what it is. But back to my story, all right? If I don't drink coffee by, you know, in the morning by 2 o'clock, I can't barely, barely function at all. It's, it's scary. I should uh, probably seek help for that. Or start weaning myself off of that, because that's probably not a good thing to be that addicted. Okay. What are we doing? What are we doing here? Let's go back over here. All right. Let's get this stuff bagged up. And then we'll keep doing cycles on the ultrasonic. And doing the cycles on the ultrasonic, we're going to tear into that front wheel hub. <laughs> and that uh, should be a lot of fun. Okay. Should be a lot of fun. Remember the video? I remember the video, making the video of re removing the hub on the 72. And it was absolute pure misery. Um, I'm hoping this one's going to be a little bit easier. The guy that I bought this bike from said he already started some of the work on it. He didn't really specify exactly what he had done. But 
he said he'd done quite a bit, and he had a lot of new parts like laying around and stuff. So, I mean, I'm, we might open up that wheel, and there may be, you know, there, there, there may be new brake pads in there. Wouldn't that be something? So I'm gonna just put 70 CL on here. And there was my parts for that. Oh, I need to get this gasket out of here. Let's see if I can do this real quick. See if we can knock this out. And then I'm feeling pretty good about just kind of doing the ultrasonic cleaning. And maybe I can get online. So, hey, guys, one thing, too. I don't know if you all noticed this or not. Uh, Common Motor does have a Labor Day sale going on right now. And uh, if you do need some parts, now would be a great time to go and do that. Uh, there is a sale, um, so it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to go and hop on and just order some parts. I mean, I, I don't remember what the percentage off was. I don't remember that. Um, don't remember, but any kind of savings is savings. So I started my cart the other night, and I was like, oh, I'm going to hold off until I tear these carburetors apart to see if I need a bunch of other stuff for that. And of course I'm going to. So I may go ahead and just order that stuff. God, what the hell's going on here? It's like somebody, what the hell's going on there? It's like somebody glued shut the drain. Tula, hey Tula, how the hell are you, man? Yeah, everything is good back home. Um, for those of you who didn't know, my dad went through a little rough patch. That's why I've kind of been away from keyboard here a little bit. He had a close close call, but he is at home resting and seems to be getting better every day. And I really, man, I really appreciate all you guys that, you know, sent well wishes and, and stuff like that too, man. That, that was awesome. And I'm just happy to be back kind of doing this stuff again because usually something's going on uh, in my personal life if I'm not kind of hanging out here doing this stuff so yeah 105 on CMC yesterday Tula yeah uh, yeah I think you know I watch for those sales they always have the sales on uh, I think they have a Thanksgiving and their 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 holiday sale is usually pretty good too um, so if you can time some of your purchasing around some of those this, this thing, there's seriously like some sort of a rubber sealant on that, you know, it's crazy. CMC, um, yeah, Google it, Joe. Um, I'll try to find the link here in a second, but I'm just, you know, just like all, every time you run into things that are taking an extraordinarily ridiculous amount of effort when it should be pretty straightforward. Like getting a drain plug out of a carburetor bowl. This should not be a 10 minute process. You know, this should be a pretty straightforward freaking process. But there is like a rubber sealant on here. Don't you ever, God, do you guys ever wish that you could go back in time and just like box somebody's ears over something that they've done on something? And just be like, dude, what were you thinking? Why would you do that? Why? Oh man, it's like turning like a millimeter at a time. If that. If that. Guys, I'm going backyard mechanic again. I got I got no choice, okay? I got no choice to go a little backyard mechanic here and go to the trusty vice grips. Let's see if we can turn this out of there. Yeah, this set of carbs, man, is going to be problematic. I can already feel it. I can already feel that. Yeah. Man, alive. Okay, well, we'll let this sit with some deep creep. And then I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to kind of pick away at some of this. Yeah, it's like a rubber, it's like a rubber sealant, guys. Like, it must have leaked, and then somebody was like, screw it, I'm just going to put this in there. Because uh, that, yeah, it's like peeling off in like black flakes. That's, 
super annoying. Super annoying. All right. Well, this one's looking. This this one's looking pretty damn good, guys. I'm I'm feeling, feeling it. Feeling it. Ooh, that's hot. Dun 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 dun. There we go. Let's go over to this light. I want to try. Let's see. Let's see if I can give you a little light here. Do this a little different here. Yeah, some liquid gasket, something like that. Yeah, you're right, Tula. You're right, man. You're right. But it's a mess right now. So there's a couple little little spots on it yet. But I'd say that that's looking pretty good. I'm looking down inside of here. I'm still seeing some of the residue inside here. So I think this might be a gas situation where I take this out to the garage and maybe just work some nice fresh gas in there, see if we can clean that out. And then all of these, I'm gonna have to take guitar string to and make sure that all of these passages are clean as well. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, it should be working. Um, looks like it should be working. Hopefully it is. Yeah, but as far as having a carburetor that's clean, we got one. And again, that was just with Dawn. We're just using Dawn dish soap on that. And then here's the carburetor bowl. Yeah, it looks like everybody else is. It looks like everybody else is being able to view it. Um, hmm. I don't know. So we got a nice clean bowl too. So I love it, man. I love it. Love it. The stuff works really, really well. So I'm gonna put those aside for now. That's a great start on that. And let's go. Let's see. So okay. So I got that out. I got that out. I can drop, I can actually take this now, and we can pound out our float, or our different jets here. Again, rubber hammer, brass, punch, that's the key. That one moved easy. That one not so much, but it moved. But it moved a little bit. And let's tap this one. Come on, come on. I'm actually surprised we were even able to get that slide out of there. Had to get creative on that one. Okay, there's that and there's that. Cool, I got two for on that one. Both of those came out. So we're good, so I just need to get this last one out. And I gotta remember take my my air fuel mix screw out too and we can see what version we have of that it's so close guys it's so close it's a little bit bigger punch there it is oh my god look at this this look at this i don't think you want that on your jet i don't think you want that on your jets or your yeah yeah what is this secondary tube or I don't know what the hell it's called but you don't want that in there that's no good that's no good and then we need to take this out see if my flatty will work on this if that even wants to turn nah. I, I'm I'm really hoping I'm able to rebuild these I mean I'm sure people have seen worse who was it that was showing me pictures of a their stuff that was pretty crazy now way now way what's that mean Paul what's going on no way man why don't I have just a flat screwdriver I got it's like I've kind of gone overboard with GIS it's like well all I need is GIS screwdrivers and it's like, no, you're gonna need a smaller flathead once in a while to do some of this stuff. You're gonna need some of these other tools to do some of this stuff, you know. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I really appreciate it. I 
I really, really appreciate it, man. Guys and ladies alike, all are welcome here. We're just having fun, man. Look at this. This should not be how your air fuel mi mixture screw has to come out. <laughs> this is not how it should go. It should not turn this hard. It should not turn this hard. So that actually reminds me, I gotta go back and do that same thing on the other, on the first carb too. Yeah, I can't even turn that by hand. Oh. Yeah, it's absolutely insane. There we go, there we go. All right, so this is the one. So this is an early, early carb. Um, Cause I don't believe that there is an O-ring in here. Yeah, there is not. There's not an O-ring in here. It's just the spring and that. So boom, boom. There's that. I'm actually gonna grab this one cause I did not do that. Yeah, man, this th these look like night and day. I don't know if you can tell on the stream or not, but these are like night and day. Looking at these together right now. Again, that yeah, I'm glad I glad I'm going back and taking this out because uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. So the other thing I could do, and I tried this on my on some of my other other videos. I I know. Well, I have them. They're just up in the garage. Hepcat. I need flatties. They're up in the garage. Um, I don't want to go get them. So I'm just using what I got, man. Using what I got. I'm getting creative, and uh, I got it. See. It took a little longer than it needed to be, but there we go. There's that. So I'm gonna take this needle, put this over here into my bag. So that's good. I'm actually gonna drop this back in. I'm gonna drop this bad boy back in, I think. Give that another thing. I love these ultrasonic cleaners, man. They work so good. This is a bear cat. Let's drop this in. Yeah, this should be good now. Do, 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 do. Give this a little bit. Let's hop over here. Give it a little washy wash. Do some scrubbing on this. So you can do two, but you just gotta rotate them. A Suzuki 500 carburetor, that might be a job. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot to take this damn thing out. Gotta take this, uh, this out. There we go. Boom. Now we're good. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like every single one that I've done, I just always seem to have missed something. And I've had to go dive back in and find a problem. One time, the this piece here, uh, where which camera? This one. This pin right here, or the, the, the needle, this broke off from its little flat mount inside of there. And this was just laying inside my carburetor. And I was like, well, I guess that's, uh, that would explain why that wasn't running, right? I'm kind of starting with the carburetors though, because they're pretty integral. <laughs> and if you don't have a good set of carbs, um, that can be very problematic. And they're not cheap. You know, trying to find replacements is not cheap. I'll put the lid back on this thing so it's not so loud. We're just going to let those run for a while. Cool. All right. Let's grab all the rest of my parts for this carburetor. Throw it all in there. I wonder if I can get this, this in there, too. Getting a little overzealous now. I'm trying to do a little too much. But whatever. Oh, let's pull this apart.